this, we're gonna start with our uh, pub suite, and that would be our authentication part. And in authentication part, we're gonna talk about OWAS top 10 broken authentication. Broken authentication. Uh, broken authentication basically it's uh, just like you're uh, guessing or uh, getting unauthorized access to a specific user with the performing brute force attack and with the help of some dictionaries which contain some word phrases so you will see two different definitions over here so first of all let's go to the OWASP top 10 broken authentication definitions so if you see on the screen i simply use the graycampuswebsite.com to uh, simply has a proper definition of broken authentication. So broken authentication was an attack which is basically based on the web application login forum. It's a login forum vulnerability. And how an attacker can simply use some such of techniques to perform a brute force attack. A brute force attack where an attacker simply gain unauthorized access to a specific user to guess the correct phases. So over here you can see broken authentication occurs when the application mismanage session related information session related information that could be identify or get compromised and this information can be in form of session cookies password secret keys etc it could be in anything in any form of that the aim here is to either get into someone's else session or use a session which can be ended by the user or steal session related information by check a few scenarios for example, the most important thing over here is to get compromised and uh, the information can be in form of session cookies or password or secret keys. Secret keys means your APIs, API keys over there. So our major agenda would be to simply gain unauthorized access and simply penetrate all the scales one by one and simply look for the valuable data which can lead us for information part. So we're going to look all the things over here. Let's have a look on the screen that uh, what kind of information can be related to session hijacking or the broken authentication. So if you see over here, press the back button after the log, log out to see if you can get into the previous session or not. Sometimes many applications have a feature that if you get log out, if you can simply press the back button, we can jump to the previous session where we left. So an attacker can also get the information from those things. Try to hit the URL after logging out to check if we are able to access the page of it. So when you are simply log out from the application, you can simply press it again and check if you can jump to the same directory or not. Or you can see, check the presence of session related information in the URL. Session related information means your session token might be there. Try to manipulate them to check if you can able to write someone else's session. There is a time when an attacker simply uh, use some session token. Some session tokens will be manipulated over here. So how an attacker simply uh, escalate or jump to the previous session or an another sessions, simply changing the last three to four digits of any number, any random number. So he can try to jump any of the sessions over there. So sometimes the data which is can be shown on the source code also. Try to find the credential in the source code, right click on the page and review hit shots. Sometimes coder hard coded the credentials for easy access which someone remained unified. So my major agenda over here is to simply penetrate or simply look for the valuable data that can be look that can be easily guessable. So my major agenda over here is to simply to, uh, simply uh, identify or simply use all the data one by one. Um, but this was a normal definition how a broken authentication works. But if you see over here on the port swagger, over here you can see an attacker can simply session related anything could be in the token format. So see, if an attacker simply forget your password, enter your password again to reset the password, reset your password, okay? So he modified the post request header to the evil dot user part. Then this application will go to the vulnerable server that the vulnerable server will simply manipulate this one, the server side, then it forward to the session token related to the attacker part. So it's a process like your this. A request can, can be generated from the client side. Remember, the client is the major part where a request can be generated and response can be came from the server side that could be related to the information part. 
So if you see over here, the most common authentication mechanism used by the websites and discuss potential vulnerabilities in them. And uh, there are different different authentication mechanism as well. Some typical vulnerabilities can be introduced by improper implementation. Improper implementation means uh, some of the your poor code or something is not configured properly. So if you see over here, uh, we're going to talk about the labs also. As always, we have created some interactive labs. Yes, the port circuit is always there. So what exactly? Remember the three things you should be in your mind. See, three things in your mind, something you have, some uh, something you know, something you have, something you are or do. So these three things are important in your authentication parts. For example, let's see what is authentication. Authentication is a mechanism where you already have a part of the application. So you have already user credential data. Authentication is a process of verifying the identifier of a given user and a client in order, in other words, it involves making sure that, that they really are who they claim to be. At least in the part, websites are exposed to anyone who is connected to the internet by design. Robust authentication mechanism are integral aspect and effective way of security. So the most important thing, forget this one. They, they are really who are, who they are to claim to be. So it means I am the part of that application. So you have to be a part of that application that can be used for the further stages. For example, the three authentication which I already mentioned you, something you know, something you have, or something you are or do. For example, something you know, something you know what it could be what thing? You know the password and the un password security questions, such as password, you know the password, or you know the answer of the security questions. Hmm? There are some sensitive referred as knowledge factors. Something you have means something means have means physical object like your mobile phones or security token. Something there has referred to a position factors and something you are or do, for example, biometric or pattern of behavior. This is an in inheritance factor. So these three components, uh, your uh, knowledge factor, your position, your position factor, your inheritance factor, these are the three important things that can be worked in the authentication part. When you are authenticated into an application, you have to think that if I know something, there should be a password or there should be some multiple questions for security questions. There, sh there should be some token sessions, there should be a mobile, an OTP, you can say. An OTP over here is there, say. Something you have, it could be your biometric or your simply behavior of the application. So it depends on the human nature. For example, we're going to try all we are not going to try all the applications one by one, but huh, we're going to try the labs over here. For example, you can see. See, authentication is a process. See, what is the difference between authentication and authorization? This is important. Authentication that you, that you claim that, uh, that you, who you are or who to be. Authentication is a process of verifying that the user who they claim to be. Whereas authentication involves ver verifying whether a user is allowed to do something or not. Authorization means permissions on the application. So they, they granted some applications, some permissions on a specific user. For example, they have given uh, in the context web security application, authentication determines whether someone attempting to access the site with the user and calls releases name person who created the account. Once call one to three is authenticated, his permission determines whether not to be authorized or example to access the personal information about other users. So we, whenever we are uh, on the application, we have to think we have the specific permissions over there. For example, there are the lots of things can be happen over here or for the attacking phase. <coughs> for example, you can say how do authentication make it vulnerable arise? This is the most important thing. First of all, remember the core mechanism, how the core mechanism works. Then you can go to the attacking phase. If it doesn't know the core mechanism, you will not, you will suffer some uh, problem with the uh, uh, part. For example, you can see they have given the proper authentication. Two types of uh, attacks can be there. Most vulnerable in authentication mechanism are in two ways. 
first the authentication mechanism are weak because they fail to adequately protect against brute force attack see a normal brute force that's it a brute force attack is when an attacker uses a system or a trial and error in an attempt to guess valid user credentials. These attacks are typically automated using wordless or username and password. See, they are using a word list to simply penetrate or simply attract. Aut automating this process, especially using dedicated tools, potentially enables an attacker to make vast number of login attempts at the high speed. Brute force is not always a case of making completely random guesses and username and password. See. Basic logic, public available knowledge attacker can find tune brute force attack to make more educated guesses. Brute forcing usernames. Usernames are especially easy to guess if they conform for recognizable pattern such as email address or something like that. So if you see over here common C business logins in format of first name, last name. There is no obvious patterns. There's a lot of techniques can be happen over there one by one. But the major part is to understand what how the attack possible. See, logic flow. They have given a logic flow. Logic flow means poor coding. In the implementation, allow an authentication mechanism to be bypassed entirely by attacker. This is sometimes referred to as broken authentication. In many areas, web application logic flow will simply cause the website to behave unexpectedly, which may not be securely issued. Logic flow, but exactly the logic flow is. We, we get to know the, about the brute force. So logic flow over here, see, if you know the username, but you have entered the wrong password, so you can simply guess the username is root. So if you see over here, an attacker simply identify one by one, username and password is incorrect. Username and password is incorrect. Username and password is correct. So we have to check one by one. You have to try until you get the core mechanism. But exactly the what are the business logic possibilities? In the burp suite, you will see all the things are interconnected. Business logic vulnerabilities are flow in design of implementation of an application that allows an attacker to elect initiate behavior. This potentially enables attacker to manipulate legitimate functionality to achieve a malicious goal. Ill Illicit initiate behavior means unwanted, unwanted uh, pop-ups or unwanted uh, application errors. In this context, the term business logic simply refers to a set of rules that defines how the application operates. See, as the rules always directly related to business associate vulnerabilities and also known as application logic vulnerabilities. So they have given a proper scenarios over here one by one. So let's try to simply penetrate our skills and uh, uh, first of all let's have a look how we're going to try to attack. So let's try with this one. So username animation by different response code. So we have this lab is vulnerable to username animation and password brute force attack. It has an account with a predictable username and password, which can be found in following word list. So over here, candidate username and candidate password. To solve this lab, enumerate a valid username, would force it user password, and then access to the email account. Okay. So see over here. They uh, they given us a proper word list with the usernames. Hmm? You can copy the paste of the authentication labs over here and uh, they have given the password also so the major objective we're gonna try is we're gonna to we're gonna copy this one okay so these are the words that i'm gonna copy and uh, yeah so these are the word list they we're gonna use it for so i'm gonna save this one on my desktop and then I'm going to name this one username.txt. It's done. Let's try to get the password also. So this is our this is our password list. So let's try to copy all the words over here. So 
so we have the both of the dictionaries over here. We have here the user.txt, we have the password.txt. So let's uh, do over here, let's make a folder and I'm going to name this export. Uh, this is a normal word which I'm going to use, export over here. So both we have a username and password issue part. So, so in an IS one dictionary. So we have username txt, password txt. So our major objective over here is to understand. See, the major goal of this application is to uh, this is vulnerable application to uh, to username enumeration and password brute force attack. Username animation. So we have to guess the correct username first of all, and it has an account with a predictable username and password, which can be found in the following. So to solve this, to solve this lab, enumerate a valid username. See, enumerate the valid username and brute force the user password, and then access to the main account. So if you are not uh, new in this one, you can simply check the content which is given over here. <laughs> so see this one. So with the with the verb running, investigate the login page and submit a input username and password. In proxy HTTP history, check find out the post login request, send it to the intruder. In the verb intruder, go to the positions tab and uh, make sure the attack by a sniper selected. Sniper is the single threatening word. Click clear to remove all the tags. Leave the password and static value on. Now payload on the selected page of simple to list. Uh, Let's try to enumerate this once. Okay. When the attacker is finished, look at the status code. Notice that they defeated 200 status code until it's really driven 302. So let's have a look what will happen. So uh, I'm going to copy this one again and uh, I'm going to paste it here. So let's try to get access. Yes, so we are in the login forum. So broken authentication will be occur on the login page. So we have a login over here. So let's select, click over here. So we have a proper login.php. And uh, over here I can see all the histories over here one by one. So, but the history is not captured. So, what we're gonna do? We're gonna try to use my name, and that would be Partho, and that would be Monday. So, I simply use my username, invalid username. See, uh, but my major objective was to simply get the post request of the login forum. So, can I see the post request over here? I was simply crawling the website. So. Yes, we can see the post request over here, the login, which is 200 over here, username elevation. See. So, but exactly our username was over here. See. Uh, so, my major objective would be uh, finding the content from HTTP history. We can simply send it to the intruder. So, we're going to perform a brute force attack with the help of intruder, as I mentioned you before on the Burpsword class. So you can see the intruder has been pop up. So what we need to do, we're gonna go to the options, we're gonna go to the positions. And over here in the position, I can see this was a post request, a post method. And uh, what I'm gonna do over here, we're gonna try, you can see there are around four payloads. The four payload means the four parameter values. So one, two, three, four. So we're gonna use uh, attack method sniper. Why we are using the attack method sniper? Because it's a thing we gonna have to enumerate the username first. So I'm gonna clear all the tags. Uh, so first thing first, we can see our major agenda will be to attack on the username and password. Folder. So the username would be my this. So I'm gonna highlight over here. Add tag. Okay, so let's add the tag. Okay, I was using clear, sorry. So we can attack on the specific username parameter, which that would be over here. And uh, you can see sniper, we're gonna use the sniper because this is a single parameter attack. 
So first thing first, you have to guess the username, the valid username over there. So let's use the payload options. In the payload options, you can see set payload one, and uh, there's only one payload because of to the position that we selected. So set uh, payload set one, and the payload type is simple list. We're gonna use a simple list over here. Um, so what we're gonna do, we can try to load our payload. So we gonna do one thing, and that would be our dictionary. So the dictionary was in my, uh, where was it? It, it was on the desktop, yes. So yeah. So first thing, we, we already have captured the password and the password.txt and user, username.txt. So let's see the username.txt file, which contains all the usernames over here. Hmm? And which contains around 100 words. So in the options, you can simply, uh, as I mentioned, you you can simply num increase the number of threads you want or the number of retries you want. So let's try. Okay, so the scan. So the scan has been done. So you can see they are showing 200 requests. 200 mail requests means that all the users exist. But how are you going to identify which user is the correct one? Because the status is 200. Hmm? Sometimes, if you simply use a valid username on this application side, you it will give you a maximum length, length of the packet. The maximum length of the packet means there should be a chances of the users to be correct. So if you see over here, we got a we got one user. Which is announce, and let's see the response code. Username announce for different response. So you will see something like username, uh, user animation by different response. You will see two hundred, which is a maximum length. But if you try other users, you will see the same thing. But you will see invalid username there. And before that, I didn't get any invalid username. I get invalid password. See. So it means the announce of a username is the correct user that we have found till now. You have to simply understand the business business logic of the application and how the application works that can be used for the further stages. There are different kinds of things can happen. All you just have to understand the behavior of the application. So it means we have a username that is announced over here that is correct, but the password is incorrect over here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just uh, I'm going to just copy the name over here, and uh, in the position where I put the uh, path over here, now I'm going to put the username announced. Because this was the correct user over here. The major objective of this application, the major obje ob uh, objective of this part is to simply animate the valid username, animate the valid username, and brute force on the username password field. So we already found the username, and that was our announce. See, if I write uh, Partho and some random words, it will show me invalid username. But uh, when I simply write announce, and the uh, thing you will see incorrect password now it means the username announced was a proper validate user on the web application part that exists 
and the password was wrong because I put a random password over here. So let's try with the performing a brute force attack on the password parameter. So I'm going to use a sniper add tag and the payload we're going to use the, now we're going to remove the payload over here. Let's clear this one. Now I'm going to use the password.txt file. So it contains a uh, hundred words again over here. So uh, let's start with the options. Number of threads, number of threads five, number of retries, failure three. Let's try with the attack. What will happen? So the scan has been done. The scan has been done properly over here. And uh, over here, we have to examine from the, uh, we can see over here, 302. 302 indicates that the something has been found over there. So it means it's a valid username and password. You will see 400. 400 means bad request. Invalid CSR token. You will see 200 also, which means OK. But you have to identify these things with the help of your normal things. So what could be the possibilities? The possibilities are like your, you have to simply guess the correct one. So the password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's try over here. I'm going to, I'm going to write uh, uh, the wrong pass one and uh, the password will be one, two, seven, three, six, seven. Invalid session token. Incorrect password. So let's try with announce and the password. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, showing me incorrect password again. Uh, let me show only the 302 post. Ah, there's only 302. So it should be the password, but uh, I'm getting an error over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Let's see, 302. 302 indicates that the something has been found over there and that can be used for the further stages. So announce, uh, and uh, I guess this is having some problem with the, uh, there's a problem with the JS where it's screen. Mm. There's a problem with that. That's why it's showing you this error kind of things. But the major agenda of this application is to simply find the response code. There are many further things can be happened over there. See, username and animation by substantially different response. You have to identify the response parameter. You have to identify the uh, uh, identify the correct uh, correct credentials credentials from the exact uh, response code. Response code with, which will be from the server side. <coughs> So they have given the username and password again to okay you have to enumerate username and password and it's an account with a different particular username and password which can be found in for you. To solve this lab and enumerate a valid username, put force, password, access their account page. So they have given a proper thing. See, this one is totally different because in this one we have to use a proper, you have to find a grep function 
a graph function that can be used to find the exact data on the server side. Graph match. You can add uh, which graph function you want to add to fetch the exact file over there. You can see with running work, submit an invalid username and password, post method request. In the payload tab, make sure that the payload type is simple. On the positions tab under grab extract, click add, and uh, in the dialog, scroll down for the response. Find the error message invalid username and password. See, you have to find this one. Use this mouse and the highlighted text content with the message. This is setting automatically. Adjust the click OK when start the attack. When the attack is finished, notice there is an additional column containing the error message. So we're gonna add we're gonna add a new type which could be invalid username and password, and that would be in our tag of our attacking part. Or you can see grab extract. So I will say try to do do this one because uh, all you have to do is to simply find the error of this application. All you have to do is to simply find an error. You have to simply copy this error over here. See, this is a response code. This is a response code from the server side. So the major objective of this one is to simply get the behavior. See, grab extract. Go to option tab under grab extract. So what exactly grab extract over here? Grab extract. Where is it? Uh, there is a grab match. There's a grab extract. Oh, yeah, see. So we can do add. Uh, Why is this not working? Okay, no issue. No. From invalid username and password to add. See. All you have to do is now simply have to intercept the packet. From the HTTP history, this one, and use this one to intruder. And you already have used the uh, okay, grab extract starting from after inspections. I already found that this was. Uh, this was the user invalid user and password that we selected. Yes. So in the payload, you have to clear all these things. Then you have to do a simple sniper attack. Oh, sorry. You have to select over here. And attack. So you will see a new parameter that would be your like this. And through this one, you have to examine the correct path, which one is the correct one from the response code.
there are lots of response code which is different 33053292 3306 3308 so over here you have to identify this one with the response code so through the response code you have to identify which one is the correct one if this is the correct one so you have to, you can check through the username but uh, over here if this is correct one is invalid username password this is not the correct one so, So this is also not this is also not correct. So in this scenario, you have to identify the correct one. Three zero two nine, which showing is this admin invalid username and password. So our major agenda is to understand how the counter meter works because. Over here, you will see an error message will be pop up, and it will ex it will find the exact one that you are looking for. And in the broken authentication part, you will see you have to use this perfect one. There are many further things can happen, and uh, is to simply examine the correct one, which can be lead us for information getting part. So many things can be happen. See. In a dialog scroll down and response will be until you find an error in valid username and password. Use the mouse to highlight the text contents of the message. You have to observe the valid one. When the attack is finished, notice there is an additional column containing the error message.